Hi, and thanks for attending this presentation. Um, the title is Inspective and Coordinated Processes, but I will just go on some details on principles we, we take inspiration from. In fact, it's from evolution from spaces, and it's inspired by Piaget's work in psychology, and uh, we interact with this framework, which is more <coughs> a philosophy. So if you're interested in the principles presented, uh, you might see the papers because the paper because there is much more content in it, of course. So, uh, the first step might be some synchronization. In fact, every organism or agent, if we try to grow them, is integrated in an environment and there are a couple of dynamics between the agent and over agents and the agent and the environment. And what is common between all these elements is that they are not totally random or chaotic, but there is some order in it, some raw entropy. So, for example, if there are only chaotic, chaotic changes, uh, you only can react to things. But if there is some rhythm, order, you can synchronize with it. So, an example is some plant. So, when the sun goes out, it just goes to sleep, and I mean for photosynthesis, or dormancy in winter, and when the sun is on, it's okay. But uh, here it's just adapted to its environment. But if the reason is lost, so for example, it just sleeps when it's supposed to do photosynthesis, it will just die. So this is some, some element which is important in environments. You cannot do whatever you want together. But this was some really simple environment. Once you add movement, for example, here is not some swimming eggplant, but uh, some bacteria or paramecia, ciliate. Uh, only the fact of having actions makes uh, the whole environment much more complex. In fact, just by putting information during evolution in genes, you cannot just anticipate whatever the environment will be. So the agent, rather than having some copy of the environment, has just some behaviors implemented in. So here, for example, what is blue is sugar, and the bacteria to, to live must feed from, from it. So if it moves somewhere where there is less sugar, then there are two possible behaviors. Either it goes just straight, this is the only option for swimming, and then it will die again, but there is another one which is kind of implemented in genes which is just tumbling around. It's totally random because it doesn't see what, where food lies. So it, it will start to turn, not like this, but well, I do what I can. And then, if it's lucky or is doing this anytime so it will sooner or later survive, it will go to another source of food. So here, environment is kind of unpredictable, but there are some rules that can help to to survive. So now we switch to another level, and um, if the environment is much, much more complex, and if you have much more movements available to you, you might be the spy sect, I might say, it's neither an insect nor a spider, but um, if you see something, you don't know what it is, but it might be some predator for you, but it's not written in your genes or during evolution. So here, of course, if you wait, you wait too much, you will die again, but if we wait a bit, we still have, at this point, some basic set of reflexes or emotions or things that goes fast and can select correct behavior. So here, some reflex might just say, oh, this is something fast coming to me, so I must do something to avoid it. And if it survives, it will just go away because it was directly written, but if we have memory and if, we, if it starts to learn from it, the so next time it just sees the frog or the predator, it will not wait for the storm to, the storm to attack, so it will just go away. So this is another part. In fact, there you don't have directly behavior to know what to do when you're in front of a frog, but you have rules to say how to build new behaviors from previous ones. So the basic set is reflexes, emotions, 
and then you build new things on top of it. So during life of any individual, so if we take discrete steps, it's even if it's continuous in, in real life, we have situation, actions, situation, and so on. I will start to <laughs> go faster. Uh, oops, maybe a bit too much. <laughs> Sorry about three, three more minutes. Three more minutes. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, so there is some problem. But uh, if you take only the situation action, so you wait for the situation and you act, this is some reactive system. But if you take action and anticipation, you have some pure anticipative system. Okay, I will just introduce some differences and advantages from anticipative systems because many people just use reactive systems. So I think both of them are really useful and must be combined. So if we have, okay. Two obstacles, one in front and one back, and two flies which are not the agent, but it is some frog trying to catch it, so you have the, the field of vision there, and on top you have reactivity and on the bottom anticipation. Um, for example, the differences will be saccade versus smooth tracking. When there is some obstacle in front, you will just lose it or just continue to see it because you are anticipating its position. But Anyway, the sy both systems will work, and when it's in front, if there is some ambiguity, one system might get caught by the overall element. So here are some advantages of anticipation. But then, what you need also is just to link anticipation to build, in fact, coordination. So I will give some example of a two-dimensional navigation application. Um, so this is some uh, representation, in short. So you don't have only one anticipation, but a full network of action and anticipations. So here is, for example, places, so on that kitchen, and things that are far away, so it's a way to go on from work, for example. So now I hope it will work. Okay. So now the yellow disk is, in fact, external perceptions, for example, or local activity. So, just by this activity, it will just kind of highlight uh, this, this part of the network. In fact, the network uh, seen like this is some kind of dynamical landscapes of activity and attractors. So, when it's red or even yellow, it's an attractor, and when it's black, it's just not really active. So, here it will just diffuse or propagate through uh, anticipations. So it's kind of long range and speed up anticipations. And so if you are attracted around this point with just, for example, the yellow, sorry, the yellow this corresponds to current position or any perception. So it's kind of integrating all modalities. You will just go around this because activity is at work, for example. But the whole network may be activated by other elements. For example, if you start to be tired, so think of being tired is linked with uh, sleeping and sleeping with going to bed and so on. So it's every element here it seems like symbolic, but might be some full network in other dimensions. So this activity might by back propagate okay, through all the network. And in fact, at any moment, you have all the network uh, like diffusing activity in all the way around. So it's really powerful. So then, for example, if uh, sleep is when you're really tired and you don't have anything left to do at work, we just start to move to higher are well to areas with higher activity. So we'll be attracted to the parking to take your car and so on. So we'll, you will move, so perception will change and you will do according actions depending on where you are. But then well, if you go on you will just go to bed. But in time the landscape might change. So if you start to be hungry, it might both like activate or by different connections. The kitchen at home and a closed restaurant. So activity will get there. But still, the bed plus kitchen or at home might be a stronger attractor, even with that propagation. But if the attraction is even more important, all the plan so the implicit plan you've been doing will change and you will just go 
directly to the restaurant. So in fact, what is represented here is some interpolation of movements. Okay. And then, if you eat, it will just, uh, you will not be angry anymore, and you will go on, a, on another plan to go on, which is different from the previous one. So plan is implicit, and it's brought any time by just interacting activities in the network. And once you embed, activity will lower for this part of the network, and so on. And so to conclude, uh, here are not all, I didn't detail all the principles, but there might be a reason, which was not present in the application now. Regulation, not explained, assimilation, not term for uh, anticipation, of course, and coordination, and learning, which was not explained uh, either. And then the current application we use, so the, the way we represent information, knowledge, is always the same, just with, just with, with some elements uh, varying from experiment to experiment because we try to find the basic set of principles needed. So, for example, there was some application on reason tracking, which used everything but coordination, so it was really simple. Robots interaction, I did some internship in Japan, using humanoid robots to build complex behaviors on grasping objects, and it was not using coordination, in fact, but just um, anticipative and reactive systems and no reason. Navigation doesn't use reason or running, and of course, our goal is to just find some realistic sensory motor agent which uses everything. So it's just some possible approach to cognition with everything similar on representations, but at least it should be something interesting for sensory motor modules if you, you take some integrative <laughs> and just for information. Dimensions were one, in fact, for reason tracking, just bits. About ten for robot interactions with joint, joint angles and such. Uh, navigation with four, but now I'm doing some one with 30 <coughs> degrees, but it's not finished. And I think for a real sensory motor agent, which will be something huge, so there is still much work to do. Thank you very much. <coughs>